hands of God enough time. Amen. So once again, I just want to ask Pastor Henry just to come, greet us, and maybe share something as he brings to us Reverend Speaks today. Can we put our hands together for Pastor Henry Owade? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for worshiping the Lord. Uh, it is a blessing to be here once again. And uh, when the man of God was speaking, it reminds me of the words of Jesus. He healed uh, 10 lepers. Hallelujah. But one came to appreciate and yes, where are others? So, I believe the Lord has a reason why you came. Praise the Lord. God is looking for men and women that are going to be men and women of impact in these last days. Amen. Those that are going to sit at his feet, hear his heart, grasp his heart. Amen. If you are going to to be somebody special to God, you must enter his heart. You must uh, know the heartbeat of God, what is moving the heart of God, especially at this time. As you read the Bible, as you listen to the word of God, try so much to know what is the heartbeat of God, what is God's desire in the time I'm living, what must I do to make impact to bring people to him. Hallelujah. Uh, the other week, uh, it was last week, I was in uh, Nakuru in one church. I was amazed. I entered a church and I didn't know. They invited me for lunch hour. And all of a sudden, people came, over 50 people who were not born again. And as I preached the gospel, more than 30 people responded to salvation. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, he that wins souls is wise. So you better be among us the wise people that are going to win souls. Uh, I feel the presence of God in this place. And thank you, man of God, for that wonderful worship. Amen. You know, preachers will end here. Preaching will end here, but worship will go forever. A preacher stands between... Uh, uh, a preacher shares the word of God to men, but a worshiper ministers to God at the same time to men. Amen? So, uh, those of you whom God has called to worship the Lord, keep on worshiping the Lord until you see the fruits, the results. Um, before I invite the man of God, I just want to encourage you to write down what uh, the man of God is sharing and I believe, you know, some things, they come once. There are some words you hear them once in a lifetime. And let them be rooted in your spirit, in your life. That a time that you need them, they will just uh, spring forth. Praise the Lord. Uh, that word that is rooted in your spirit is the one that can help you. Not that which is in your head, but that which is in your spirit. I remember yesterday... Uh, I shared briefly a testimony. When I was in the hospital there, the sick people in the ward, they began to tell me, pray for us. They, report, they began to tell me their needs, and I prayed for them. And everybody went home. <laughs> I was the last one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Can you imagine? I was bedridden and praying for the sick. They got healed. They went home. But the day I left, all the nurses and the doctors, they, they gathered together and we sang worship. I have even the video on my phone. Hallelujah. And uh, thus I left the place gloriously. And I pray that the Lord will bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's rise up on our feet. We're going to uh, invite the man of God all the way from Accra, Ghana. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many are ready for the word of God? Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus as we all come. Reverend Reuben speaks. Reverend Reuben speaks to come and speak. Hallelujah. You're welcome. Hallelujah. 
Now if you clap for me, let's clap for Jesus. Oh, I thought we could do better than that. That is for the King of Kings and for the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Help me celebrate our father and mother. Let's celebrate them for the great work they are doing. Hallelujah. How many of you love Pastor Andrews? Are you sure you really love him? How do I know you love him? Actions. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor, have you celebrated your birthday? Yes, I have. Oh. Oh. What about Mama? Oh, Jesus. Next time I'll come earlier. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of you bought a gift for Pastor when he celebrated his birthday? They don't even know. So how do you say you love this man? <laughs> are there young ladies here who are in relationships? Everybody's running for cover. <laughs> if your fiancé or your boyfriend forgets your birthday, what will you do? I just read from a particular country if your spouse forgets your birthday, you'll be arrested and jailed. Yeah. This week I read it. I said then I will be the first to be in jail. <laughs> Once you forget your wife's birthday and she reports you, it does, you don't need to do much. Just remember and just appreciate it. That's all. Are, are we together? Yes. Wonderful. Let's celebrate Pastor Alice. She's a sweet-spirited woman. Oh, please, let's celebrate her. Amen and amen. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Eternal Father, we thank you. We ask that this evening visit us. Open our understanding. Equip us for the next level. Strengthen our inner man. Strengthen our hands to do war and battle. Father, give us grace to carry the battle to the next level. And let us give us victory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Put your hand together, be seated. God bless you. Well, I'm not here for everybody. I may be here for one person. And that one person may be you. Hallelujah. So I'm not worried about who is here or who is not here. The most important thing is that you came. Amen. 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 Can I hear an amen in the house? Amen. I have come to a realization that all about life is access. Are we here? From the womb to the tomb is access. And the access determines the kind of doors you enter. And the kind of doors you enter determine the impact you make in this life. Are we together? And when we are talking about the doors you enter, we are not talking about this in animate structures. It may be metallic, it may be wooden. But doors are men. Doors are people. In life, there are people who are gates. Are we here? Let me tell you a story in Nigeria. One day, one man of God has a son. He came to him for prayer. He said he has done a lot of job for the military in Abuja. And they owe him over $4 million. They have to pay. And the money was not forthcoming. So he went to see his pastor to give him a seed and said, Papa, pray for me. So he prayed for him and said, go and follow your payment. On his journey back to Abuja, he encountered an elderly man in a flight, which he helped because he was carrying so many things. He helped him. He tried to assist him. 
He tried to give him a very good seat, exchange his seat for his. The man said, no, he likes where he wants to sit. Upon arrival, looking at the man, his luggage, he said, well, let me allow my driver to drop you, and then I will continue with my business. And the man looked at him and said, young man, what brings you to this part of Nigeria? And he looked at the old man and was reluctant to tell him his mission. Like he said, well, who knows? He said, Papa, I came to follow my payment. He said, with who? He said, with the Ministry of, uh, what do you call it, Defense. I did a job so and so for them for over four years. My payment have not come. Then the man pulled uh, an expired complimentary card. If I say expired complimentary card, you understand. It's worn out. Numbers are not seen. It's dirty. And it's scrambled. And he wrote behind it, pay him, Baba. And he signed. Are we together? Somebody say, pay him. <laughs> Somebody say, pay him, Baba. Unknowing to this man, that man was the sitting then president's senior brother. And he said, the fact that I have money doesn't mean I want to fly first class. I just want to be normal. I don't want to be seen by many people. That is why he sat where he sat. He carried this one out card and entered to the Ministry of Defense. As soon as they received the card, everybody began to run. And they asked him, where did you meet this man? He said, he's my friend. Now he was serious. He said, that man is my friend. And then calls began to move and immediately. He said, pay him, Baba. He returned with his pay. That is a door. Am I talking to somebody? In this life, some people you meet are not doors. They are gates. They are gatekeepers over cities. Gatekeepers over nations. I pray that in your journey of life, you encounter them. The way you are saying amen, you want me to stop preaching. Amen. Are we together here? Amen. I have also come to realize that there are people who are keys. We are human beings. We must understand the differences in faces. There are some are keys, some are doors, some are gates, and some are interpreters of your dream. Joseph had a dream from as a young guy, carrying the dream for 17 years. It looked like God was lying to this young man. Because instead of seeing progress, rather it was going down. Are you listening? He was going down to Egypt, to Potiphar's, from the pit, to Potiphar's house, and to prison. God, this is not the dream I saw. Are we here? Whilst in prison at the lowest ebb of his life, the king, Pharaoh, had a dream. And in his dream, his dream was realized. Am I talking to somebody here? Even the king, Kabera, who promised, I will remember you. You know, people, when they have issues and they come to pastor, when he's well with you, don't forget. Pastor, I will remember you. They leave your presence and they forget. They forget about you. They don't remember the things you have done. The Bible says it took the dream of Pharaoh. Are you listening? To bring this man into remembrance that I met a slave guy who has the grace and ability to interpret dreams. He said, oh, Cain, if this man comes here, this dream, he will interpret it for him. And that was the game changer in Joseph's life. There is a man carrying a dream. In that man's dream, your dream will be realized. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. 
sometimes I, I, I see people who assist ministries and young ministries and they handle it anyway, anyhow. I look at them and I shake my head because this ministry have capacity to grow. It have capacity to expand. Don't wait for it to become 10,000 sitter before you become serious. Be serious now. For in the dream, your dream shall be interpreted. So in life, there are many people we meet. Are we listening? There are doors, some are gates, some are keys, some are interpreters of our dream. It means that these are assets in our life. In Psalm 24, we are told, verse 7, in the psalm of David saying, Lift up your head, ye gates, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come. And the gates responded back, Who is this king of glory? Now for a gate to talk back, that means it is not this gate that was talking. They are powers that regulate gate and accesses in our life. And these powers began to retort, to respond back. Am I talking to somebody here? And that tells us that any door that is worth assessing is surrounded with battles. It's surrounded with resistance. It's surrounded with opposition. Am I talking to somebody here? And I pray in the name of Jesus, may God empower you to have the upper hand in every battle over your door. Every battle over your access. May God give you victory. The psalm of David said he teach my hands to war and teach my fingers to fight. That a beam of steel is broken in my hand. May God teach your hands to war. May God strengthen your hands again in battle. May you win any battle that is confronting your life. Am I talking to somebody here? What is the battle for access? The battle for access is a battle for relentlessness, for a desired rest. Putting yourself in a state of restlessness until you get your desired rest. Let me tell you something. Rest is very paramount in life. It is rest that determines the level of your development. Until you are restful, you cannot be uh, grateful. Am I talking to somebody here? Look at Solomon, he said. You know my father David. Because of many battles that he fought, he could not build. It is the battles of life that reduce great men to nothing. It is the adversities of life that make great men nothing. I'm not talking to somebody here. But Solomon said, look at me. He said, the Lord my God has given me rest all round about me. And I have purpose in my heart to build the Lord and house. May God bring you to an atmosphere and a realm of rest. I didn't hear amen in the house. Yeah. May God give you rest. Yeah. Marital rest, financial rest, economic rest. Am I talking to somebody? May you have rest all around your life. When you turn on your right, may you be restful. May you turn on your left, may you have rest. When you go forward, may you have rest. May God deliver you from the battles of life. May God deliver you from the adversities of life. It is adversities that delay destinies of great men. May God deliver you from them and give you rest in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, God, give me rest. Give me rest. Am I talking to somebody here? May God give you rest. So the battle for access is a battle for relentlessness for a desired rest. In the Genesis, in book of Genesis chapter 32, verse 24, we are told, and Jacob was left alone. Look at a man carrying a blessing, and yet he had never benefited from the blessing. A man carrying a blessing, and yet desired for a higher blessing. Bible said, at a point he saw that his brother was coming to meet him. And his brother was not coming to meet him with peace. He was coming to avenge of his birthright. He was coming to avenge him, to settle the scores with him. Why he took the birthright from him. 
Are we together? And his father-in-law, Laban, was also chasing after him. He was seeking to bring him back again to slavery because he has learned by experience that this young man carries certain skill, expertise, and an atmosphere that make businesses to blossom, make businesses to do well. Am I talking to somebody? Guess what? Because he saw he has abundance of sheep, Laban went to share his sheep. But when he came, he realized that the hand that lays the golden egg was gone. Jacob was gone. And he went after him. Am I talking to somebody? Jacob was confused. He was hard pressed. What am I going to do? My children are young. They are not proven in battle. My wives too are old. They can't fight. I'm alone. How do I fight these ones? And he said, let them go and let me settle this matter with God. He was left alone. He was restless. He was left in a state of restlessness. Then a man came to him and provoked him to wrestle with him. All night long, about seven hours wrestling from midnight to break the breaking of the morning. It was an, a wrestle of prayer, warfare, intercession. I see intercession here. Warfare, prayer. Am I talking to somebody? Wrestling with God, laying hold on God until he make his Jerusalem as a praise on the earth. He lay hold on God until the breaking of the morning. The angel said, the dawn is breaking, the sunlight is coming, I must not be found in this realm at this time I must go, he said no I'm not going to let you go not until you bless me he began to touch his the thigh, the hollow of his thigh, he said you can break my spine, you can break my bones you can break my life as long as I have life within me until you bless me I'm not going to let you go, he said young man what is your name he said my name is Jacob he said no you are a prince you have strength with God and you have strength with man you have prevailed you have entered into your realm of rest may God bring you to a place of rest Amen. Amen. am I talking here the way you are writing it means you want to you want me to can I get water Thank you. Hallelujah. Is it okay to drink water? <clears throat> Amen. So, in life, you must learn to fight. You must learn to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of us pray small, then you stop. No. You can't survive in this realm with that attitude and life. From the womb to the tomb is warfare. And you must know how to fight. You must know how to handle the mechanics of warfare. You must know the art of the secret place. Am I talking to somebody here? Are we together? Are we together? What is the battle for access? It is a battle for restlessness, for a desired rest. It's a, a relentless effort in the pursuit of open doors. You don't rest until the doors are open. Are you in the house? So you must know how to knock. If you knock and the door is not open, don't give up. Keep knocking. Keep knocking until they open the door for you. Are we together here? Are we together here? That is how you must know how to knock in the morning. Know how to knock in the afternoon. Know how to knock in the evening. Jesus told a parable to this effect that men ought always to pray and not give up. And in the parable, he said there was a woman who needed a judge to avenge of her. And she went to a judge who did not fear God nor feared man. He said, for this judge will not care for a moment. But for the continual coming, your continual knocking, your persistence in prayer is what breaks resistance of the enemy. Amen. 
Am I talking with somebody? Your persistence is what breaks resistance. So you must learn to keep pushing. And there are simple ways of opening a door. If you knock and the door is not opening, you must break it by force. Am I talking to somebody from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom suffering violent and the violent take it by force. So if the door refuses to break, refuses to open, you must apply the force to open the door and you must you need that force in prayer. Let me tell you something. In this kingdom, most of us, what we are doing, we are doing the right thing. I'm not talking to somebody. You are just doing the right thing. But the force required to take what you, your destiny requires, you don't have that force. Oh. Am, I, am I talking? Am I talking? So you require a higher force. Am I talking to somebody? Oh, you don't have big uh, plus size women here. Are we here? My sister, come. My brother, come. Are, are, are we here? No, no, my brother. I said, sister, come. Young man, come. Are we here? Hallelujah. Are you okay? Yes. My brother, can you carry him? Can, can you carry her? Very easy. <laughs> Hallelujah. My brother, come. Please. Can you carry him? Now, listen. Carrying this one is very easy. The force required to lift this one is not the same force required for this one. Are you listening? So, in your journey of life, you might have lifted something like this. But now you come in contact with a weight of this size. You require another force. Are we here? From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom suffered violent, and the violent take it by force. You cannot take it because the force you have is too small for what you are carrying. May God increase your force. Amen. Amen. Am I being a blessing to you? Yes. Are, are we here? May God increase your force. Some of us, it is required in prayer. You must embark on a certain journey so that you gain certain weight in the spirits. I'm not talking to somebody. Some of us, you must embark on certain fastings, certain time to be with God alone so that your weight in the spirit increases because the forces you are confronted with, they are heavier and stronger than you. I'm not talking to somebody here. Look at what God said to Cyrus. He said, I will go before you. I will make the crooked place straight. The lowlands will I exalt. The highlands will I abase. And I will break in pieces the gate of brass. And cut in asunder the bars of iron. Now, brass and iron are two different metals. Are you listening? One is very strong. The other is very heavy. So you need that weight in the spirit. And you need that strength in the spirit for these resistances to break before you. May God give you that grace. May God give you that strength. Am I talking to somebody here? Are we, are we together? I can't hear you. Are we together? Yes. Amen and amen. So, the battle of access is very crucial in life. Every access will be confronted with resistance. In Numbers 21, verse 21, God talking to the children of Israel, he said, cross over this Jordan and engage the king of Sion, the Amorite, in battle and begin to possess his land. And Israel went to do negotiation. He said, we are going to our promised land. We are passing through your land. We will not turn to the left nor to the right. We will take the high way of the king. If we need water, we will buy with money. If we need food, we will buy with money. Only permit us to go through the highway. Am I talking to somebody? And the king of Sion, the king of the Ammonites said, he will not let them pass. Are we together here? He said he will not let them pass. Today, I declare over your life, may God empower you to cross over. Am I talking to somebody? Wherever they said you will not go, wherever your destiny have confronted with resistance, I say, may you pass over. 
may you pass over poverty. May you pass over sickness. May you pass over limitation. May you pass over setback. May you pass over uncertainty. May you pass over lack and want. It is part of the process. That is not your final station. You are passing through to your promised land. May God give you access. May God give you access. Am I talking to somebody here? Every supernatural manifestation have a human part in it. You must play your part very well for God to also play his part away together. So what is the battle for access? The battle for access is the battle of open heavens. When your heavens are open, your doors in the earth realm will be open. When your heavens are closed, your earth realm will be closed. The Bible said, and the boy grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and in favor with men. To Cyrus, he said, to open before him the two leaf gates, the gate in heaven and the gate on earth. When you obtain favor in heaven, you will automatically obtain favor in the earth realm. Am I talking to somebody here? May God open your heavens for you. I say, may God open your heavens. May God open your heavens. Can you encourage me with your amen? amen. Can you encourage me with your amen? amen? May God open your heavens. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here? What is open heavens? Open heavens is the signature of God on, in the man's life. In Psalm 91, we said, He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. The shadow is the signature of God in a man's life. That shadow is the backing of God in a man's life. That shadow is the working of God with a man. The Bible said they went preaching from place to place and the Lord was working with them. He was in, they, they walk in his shadow. May you walk in the shadow of Almighty. May you have the signature of God upon your life. May you have divine backing upon your life. Oh, come on. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? What is open heaven? Open heaven is the experience of heavenly blessing in the earthly realm. Look at Jesus teaching the disciples to pray. He said, as you pray, pray this. Be it done unto us as it is in heaven. My brother, are you with me? Hallelujah. Amen. Church, are, are, are you here? Are you here? Amen. Am I talking to somebody here? So it is the experience of heavenly blessing in the earthly realms. Amen and amen and amen. amen. Open heaven is the atmosphere that guarantees spiritual interventions and angelic assistance. Am I talking to somebody here? But for heaven's intervention, Daniel would have been destroyed by the lions. But for heaven's intervention, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the fire would have lynched them. Am I talking to somebody? But heaven intervened right on time. May God intervene in your life. Amen. I say may God intervene in your life. Amen. Where open heaven is lacking, angelic presence is absent. Am I talking to somebody? Divine interventions are absent. May you not lose angelic assistance. Oh, sister, you go to heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Church, are you with me? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Oh, you, you are very quiet people. I should just lecture and go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. Without divine intervention, Mordecai would have been destroyed. Divine intervention. Divine intervention. You need it. I need it. That is why you need to walk in open heavens. When you walk in open heavens, one key thing is that you see the visions of God. The reason why many people are committing suicide and they are giving up, throwing the towel, the reason is they cannot see beyond their immediate environment. They can't see beyond their immediate happenings. 
They say the work is not going on. I'm not getting employed. I'm not getting job. I'm not having money. What am I going to do? People give up and they die. Recently, I saw somebody set himself ablaze because of economic hardship. Mombasa, in Kenya here. Because of economic hardship. Did you hear that? Am I talking to somebody? Do you know why? His heavens are closed. He can't see what is God has prepared for him on the horizons. Oh my God. Am I talking to somebody? Ezekiel chapter 1, he said, I was by the river Shaba, and I saw the heavens open, and I saw the visions of God. May you see divine visions for your life. Amen. May you see the blueprint from the hand of God over your destiny. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here? May your heavens be open. Amen. I said, may your heavens be open. Am I talking to somebody? When your heavens open, what happened? The Bible said there come the showers of blessing. Am I talking to somebody? There come showers in their season. He said the, the former and the latter rain. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I think it's better. Now I'm free. I have been cut loose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say open heavens. I pray that your heavens will be open. I pray your heavens will be open. You will not dream and see visions that lions are chasing you. Snakes are chasing you. May you see the visions of God. May you see the visions of God. May God bring unto you the former and the latter rain. Am I talking to somebody? Rain in their season. Rain in the appointed time. May your blessing not miss its season. When the thing is right, I, the Lord, I will make it right. Am I talking to somebody? May God bring your rain in their rightful season. At the time you need job, may you get that job. At the time you need to marry, like Pastor said, may your eye be open. You shine your eyes and you see the right woman. Can I hear an amen in the house? Can I hear an amen in the house? If you are a woman, when the right man comes, don't say, I am going to pray. By the time the right man appears, you tell the man, I have prayed already. I'm giving you an answer. Oh. <laughs> am I talking to somebody here? Are, are we together? When your heavens open, the hand of God is provoked over your life. The Bible said on the Mount of Camel, Elijah began to pray. And as he prayed, he told his servant, go and watch over the sea. And come tell me what you see. The servant came and said, sir, I see nothing. That is how prayers always begin. Prayer begins with nothing. You don't sense anything. You don't see anything. You don't see any sign. You don't hear any answer. But as you persist in prayer, it will always end with something. I'm not talking to somebody here. Am I talking to somebody here? Moses came before God and God said, God said to Moses, no, I will punish these people. Ah, Moses said, I'm not living here. He lied before God, prostrate, 40 days. Am I talking to somebody? For the 10th day, God said no. 20th day, God said no. 30 days, God said no. 35 days, God said no. 36 days, God said no. 37 days, God said no. 39 day, the answer of God was still no, but on the 40th day, God said, Moses, all right, that which you have said, I will do. And God changed his mind. Are we together? I'm not talking to somebody. So if Moses has stopped at 39th day, he will still not get a yes answer. Prayer always starts with nothing, but it always ends with something. He says, sir, now I see a cloud like a feast of a man. He said, that is all I need. Go tell the king to go. Tell the king to saddle his chariot and be gone. Somebody say, be gone. Somebody say, be gone. And while the king had taken off, Elijah was still at the position of prayer. And as he continued in prayer, the Bible said, in the meanwhile, the hand of the Lord 
came upon him. When the hand of God came upon him, it empowered his speed. His speed in life was accelerated. Am I talking to somebody? And when your speed in life is accelerated, overtaking is allowed. Am I talking to somebody? When your speed in life is accelerated, it doesn't matter who have arrived. It doesn't matter who have gone ahead of you. You will catch up with them. Am I talking to somebody here? Every one of us, we are running our race. Are we together here? But those who have gone ahead, you will catch up. All you need is the hand of the Lord. When the hand of God come upon you, your life will be empowered. Your speed will be quickened. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagle. Am I talking to somebody? They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. I pray for you tonight. May God begin to give you speed. May God renew your strength. May God give you speed in life. Your destiny will not be delayed. Your destiny will not be slow. Your destiny will not drag. You will accomplish more in the shortest time. Hey, am I preaching to people? Am I a strange person to you? Can I hear an amen? amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? Am I talking to somebody here? Listen, every day I say this. When you come into the presence of God, God is not going to give you material things. It is the word he's going to send to you. I'm not talking to somebody. But the word you catch aggressively, it is that word that will become flesh and live with you. It is that word that will manifest and give you produce. I'm not talking to somebody. Look at what Paul said. He said, I commend you to the word of his grace, which is able to give you an inheritance. It is the word you catch. The word with grace is the word that gives you an inheritance. If you leave this meeting without a word in your spirit, you have left without a heritage and inheritance. Nothing is going to happen. It is just an ordinary gathering. But if you live with a word in your heart and you keep meditating, pondering upon it, you keep chewing upon it, you keep saying the word, it is that word that is going to produce to you. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking to somebody here. May God's hand come upon your life. It may not be all of you. It may be one person. And that one person, if you grasp this word, is going to give you access. It's going to give you speed. It's going to make way for your life. May God cause your steps in life to be amplified. Amen. Ah, are we together here? Are we together here? Are we together here? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Open heavens could not open destiny. Our destiny sometimes are lacking to a book. And when the book is closed, your destiny is closed. In Revelation chapter 5 verse 5, John on the island in, in the realm of the spirit, he saw him that sat on the throne and had a book. No one was worried to look on the book, take the book and open the seals thereof. He said, I wept because there was nobody that was worthy. But whilst I was weeping, an angel touched me and said, Oh John, weep not. For the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he had prevailed. He had prevailed to look upon the book. Not only to look upon the book, but to take the book. Not not only to take the book, but also to open the seals. He had prevailed with his blood. Am I talking to somebody? And they sang a song unto him and said, you are worthy. You are worthy to receive strength, glory, honor, power and riches. Am I talking to somebody? So what is the thing that Jesus opened our destiny to? He opened our destiny to glory. He opened our destiny to strength. He opened our destiny to riches. He opened our destiny to honor. Am I talking to somebody? And according to that which the Lord has prevailed for us, I stand on this altar and I prophesy over your life. Whereas you have been weaker, may you receive the strength of God. Whereas you have been weaker, may you receive the strength of God. May you receive the riches of God. May you receive the honor of God. May you, I open you up to honor. I open you up to riches. I open you up to glory. I open you up to power. After Today, you are not an ordinary man they used to know you. You are walking in honor. You are walking in strength. You are walking in power. You are, am I talking to somebody at all? May you receive that glory. 
May your destiny be open. May your destiny be open. May it be open up unto power. May it be open up unto riches. May it be open up unto glory. May it be open up unto strength. May it be open up unto glory. Somebody shout glory. glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we together here? Open heaven. Some of us, our destiny, we are covered in life. Isaiah 25 verse 7. He said, on this mountain will I destroy the veil of the covering that is cast over the face of all men. Something has covered your destiny. And that is why you are not seeing clearly. That is why you are slow and you are delayed in life. That is why what must come to you is not coming. But whatever covered you, may that thing catch fire. Amen. I say, may that thing catch fire. Oh, church, are we together here? I say, may that thing catch fire. Today, I pray, may your eye be open. May your eye be open unto opportunities. May your eye be open unto blessing. May your eye be open unto the places of your breakthrough. May your eye be open. It's not everywhere you can have breakthrough. Are we together here? Are we together here? There are some places your breakthrough are there. Ruth went to Moab. There he lost his husband, lost his children. Are we together? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What is the battle for access? It is the battle to engage the angel of access. In the Psalm 91, God said, and I will give a commandment concerning you to my angels that they bear you up in their hands. Lest you dash your feet against a stone. Who are angels? Angels are given to us in times of our mortal difficulties. When our journey in life becomes very difficult, God assigns angels to assist us. Are we here? Are we here? I did not all ministering spirits send forth to minister to them who are heirs of salvation. The heir of Abraham, when they go to Jericho, the walls were high, the gates were shut. Joshua said, according to the book of the law, I don't know how to assess these doors. So God, what are we doing here? In the midst of prayer, the angel of the Lord appeared. And he went through his sword and said, who are thou? He said, as the captain of the hosts of the angels, have I now come to give you understanding, commandment as to how this wall was down. Because not even atomic bomb will bring it down. The wall was so high, the madam have a house on the wall. You know madam? You know madam? Rahab. Rahab, madam, has her house. On the wall, that was not just an ordinary wall. That was a huge wall. Are we together? The way you are looking at me, I'm shy. <laughs> are we together? Madame House was on the wall. So the, the bomb was not going to help them. They needed a divine solution for that Jericho's resistance. The angel came and gave him that solution. Go run it seven times. On the seventh time, shout. He didn't say pray. He said shout. Because their shout was going to be a weapon for God to go up and for God to sit on the wall for the wall to disappear. Are we here? Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. The angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord. Are we here? Are we here? It was the angel of the Lord that stood before Balaam and said, "You, but for this donkey, you are a dead man. The angel of the Lord. In our journey of life, we need the participation of these angels every day, every hour. You leave your house, you go to work, you go home, you need an angel. Some people went, one of our pastors, huh, he lives in Makati Hill. You know Makati Hill? 
It's a place for some of the rich people, the old rich people. One night, man of God, they woke up. His son was sleeping on a monkey bed, top bed. When they woke up, he removed the pillow and here was a live bullet under the boy's pillow. Ha, ah, man of God. Bullets. What happened? Soldiers were chasing armed robbers and they fired. And the bullet entered the boy's room. And an angel caught the bullet and put it quietly under the pillow. So they could have, they would have woken up and the boy would be drenched with blood and he would be gone. The participation of angels. You need them. You need them. Herod. Oh my God. Herod. You see, in the book of Revelation, the Bible said, a wonder appeared. I saw a woman. Are you listening? Who was pregnant. That woman represented three things. One, it represented the woman of the church of the Jews, Israel. From Pharaoh, dragon, the dragon came to Pharaoh and he began to kill all the children. Are you with me? Are you with me? Moses was smuggled out. Hallelujah. Number two, from the time of Jesus, this dragon came behind Herod and desired to kill children for two years old from the time he had an encounter with the wise man. And the angel of the Lord came and said to Joseph, take the child. And run to Egypt until I bring you word. The angel of the Lord. Number three, it also represents the woman, the church. When the church was born in its tutelage stage, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, this dragon reared up his ugly head again and he stretched forth his hand and killed James. Now he arrested Peter. Then was the days of unliving bread, 72 hours, three days interval. The Bible said the church raised prayer without ceasing. Are, are you together? Are, are we together? Yes. And in the midst of the prayer, the angel of the Lord descended. He said, Peter, rise up. Put your clothes upon yourself. Wear your sandals and follow me. Peter thought it was a dream when he had, they had walked through the iron gates. Are you listening? Until they came to the gates that opened, that led to the city, it opened on its own accord. Do you know why we are struggling to have access? Because we trust in our certificate. We trust in our effort. We trust in our beauty. We trust in our skill. So you woke up, you did not pray for the interview, and you went there. I will get it. No, you will lose. Because you walk in your capacity, men can stop you. Men can close the door on you. You. But when you go in the company of angels, they cannot refuse you. Amen. They cannot stop you. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, church, are we here? Yes. Walk in the company of angels. We need them now more than ever. We need them now more than ever. Are we here? But for an angel, I would have been dead. I'm telling you. You need them. You need them. They must be part of your journey of life. They must be part. You are not just an ordinary missionary. You must go with angels and come with angels. There is an enemy out there that seeks your life. Are we together? Are we together? So we need the participation of angels. At the time of marriage, you need an angelic assistance. Business investment, you need an angelic assistant. If you are not getting anything from control tower, God must send an angel to you. It is your heritage. It is your right. Once you are a heir of salvation, they have a commandment concerning you. After today, may the angels of access, the angels of open door, be your companions. Amen. Daniel was resisted in prayer. 
until the angel appeared to bring him answer. He said, I have come to give you understanding of the things that should happen. Are we here? Daniel started praying three years to the time of the prophecy of Jeremiah. 70 years and you will come out of Babylon. 67, he started to pray. Serious fasting and prayer. He was resisted. But the angel of access brought him an answer. Children of God, may the angel of access come to you. May they locate your access. May they locate your address. Am I talking to somebody here? Do I still have some time? I'm good. I should just go. <laughs> All right. Somebody say, just go. Uh, put your hand together for pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. What is the battle for access? It's the battle to engage the blood of access. Somebody say the blood of access. Oh. Are you sure you are here? You forced me to close quickly. <laughs> Somebody said the blood of access. Are you finding my accent difficult to understand? No. You understand? So why are you not responding? Hallelujah. Are we together? In Exodus chapter 1, God called Moses and said, Moses, I've heard a cry of my people. Come, let me send you. Go bring them out. And then you take them in. Are you here? Are you here? So Moses received the rod of God and the word of God and went into Egypt. At the rod, he wrote signs. Turn the, the rod into a serpent. We swallowed the serpent, the rod of Pharaoh magicians. Turn water into blood. Commanded frogs to come. Locusts, darkness, hail. All sort of things. But yet, Pharaoh said, I will not let them go. Ha. The magician said, sir, you don't know the havoc that this guy has wrought in the city. Our land is destroyed. We are finished. He said, no, he will not let them go. You see, at this time, forces and powers beyond the will of Pharaoh has taken over. Moses went to God and said, God, I, 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 I can't get it. This is not the bad game. You just said I should say a simple word and he will let you go. He said, oh, I didn't tell you. I have raised Pharaoh for this particular moment. Then I will show him all of my power. Church, are, we, are you with me? And after God has spoken concerning Pharaoh, he said, now listen, tonight, tell the children of Israel to get ready. Exodus 12, 12. I am going to go through the land and I'm going to execute judgment. Judgment over the gods that be. These are the powers that sit behind the seat of Pharaoh. The powers that manipulated Pharaoh to do what he does. The powers that were unwilling to let the people of God go. God said, I am going to execute judgment upon them and after they will let you go. What should we do? Kill a lamp. Every household and use the blood to mark their doorposts. I am passing through the land. But for the blood, the work of the road would have been fruitless. The work of the road would have been what? Uh, uh, rubbish. Am I talking to somebody? The impact Moses commanded. All those impacts will still not let the people go. But when the blood appeared, there was access. The iron gate that will not open began to open. Am I talking to somebody? The iron furnace that will not open. God said, I have brought you out of this iron furnace. I have lifted the iron by the power of the blood and I have given you access. In the book of Zachariah, he said, return to the stronghold of the blood. For this day, I have commanded your prisoners to come out of the pit wherein there is no water. Am I talking to somebody? You may be caught up in a pit, but when the blood that appears, you have access to come out. Amen. You have access to come out. 
Am I talking to somebody here? In Matthew 27, when Jesus Christ died, the Bible said from the time of Adam on to the time Jesus died, nobody goes to the graves and come back. Oh my God. But when the blood of asses hit the ground, there was a shaking and the graves were open and they that have died, they arose and they walked the street of Jerusalem. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? Hold it there. When the blood dropped, Jesus said it's finished. The curtain in the Holy of Holies, it was torn, separated. Am I talking to somebody? And from that we have access to heaven itself. Why? He said we have a new and a living way through him, Jesus himself. The blood gave us access. Paul picking on this said, for we have access by the blood. May God give you access. May God give you access. Where they resisted you, may you carry the blood of the lamp. And wherever the blood appears, may they give you way. Am I talking to somebody? May they give you way. May they give you way. Whatever limits people of your kind, today you are coming not in your name, but you are coming in the name of the blood. May they give you way. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Somebody said the blood of asses. Somebody said the blood of asses. So the blood gives us access through the iron gates. It gives us access in the temple. It gives us access to go even under the world. Underworld. Are you listening? You can go to hell and come back by the blood. Amen and amen. I didn't say go and try. If you go and you are lucky, so my case. But that is true. Are we here? Am I talking to somebody here? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The blood. A new and a living way to heaven itself. That is why we come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. May the blood of Jesus give you access. In your journey of life, may gates that are closed before you, may they be opened by the power of the blood. Amen. I say, may they be opened by the power of the blood. Amen. May God give you uncommon access in your life. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? You need to meet certain strategic people. May the power of the blood bring them together. Amen. Are we here? It started in chapter 1. By chapter 12, they came out because of the blood. Some of you have come to the chapter 12 of your life. This year, you must surely have access. You must surely have access. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. What is the battle for access? It is the battle to engage the spirit of Rhoda. Are we here? As chapter 12. The spirit of Rhoda. Who is Rhoda? When the angel left Peter, Peter went to Mary's house where they were praying. And when he went, he knocked. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. And the dumb, dumb, uh, a fine damsel who was among the people praying, her name was called Rhoda. This verse, I think there is a problem because she did not answer the door. Are you in the house? Rhoda came to answer the door. No, Rhoda did not answer. The King James said, when she heard Peter's voice, he went to the people. Ha! Ah, people, it looks like Pastor Peter is at the gates. He said, you are by yourself. You are crazy. Peter, we are praying for but this is the man that executed him. Why do you say Peter is at the door? He said, Peter is at the door. Peter is at the door. Hallelujah. 14. And when she knew Peter's voice, 
She opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gates. Why would she not open the door? It is only when we go to heaven that we know. We first we said that it is out of excitement. Are we here? But it is more than excitement. The question is, who represents Rhoda in our life? Rhoda represents people that know our, us. They know our story. They know our pain. They know our tears. But yet, they refuse to lift a finger to help us. Are, are we in a house? Are we in a house? Are we sure you are here? There are people who know your struggles. Some of them will promise you, but their promise will never happen. We will take you to America. You live here till you, you grow gray hair. So, ha have you received some of the promises before? We will do this for you. They never do it. They represent Rhoda. That is why I said in the introduction, we must learn how to pray. Are we here? Now, when we pray, three things happen. God chooses to answer prayer by himself. After 25 years of waiting, we have waited for long. God came to Abraham one fine afternoon. Abraham saw three men coming. He said, sir, please come. Let me give you water, wash your feet, and refresh you. If you want to continue, you can continue. But please, come to my tent. Let me refresh you. Abraham went to kitchen himself. Took a sheep, killed it, and prepared food for these swans, strangers. When they have eaten and they have belled, ah, God the Father said, Abraham, where is your wife? A year by this time, you will see a son. Sarah began to laugh. Ha! 25 years of prayer, God chose to answer the prayer. So there are places in our life, God decides to answer the prayer by himself. Number two, when God refused to answer, he sent his angels. So he will send an angel to come. Daniel, from the day you started prayer, commandment came. And now we have come. Am I talking to somebody here? God used angels to answer our prayer. And in the third phase, God uses men. This is where most of our battles are. The battles are not in the heavenlies. The battles are in the realm of men. Are you here? Are we here? Because all blessings of God come from God through men to men. Men are the midwives of destiny fulfillment. So your destiny need men. Pastor was talking about relationship. It's all because your destiny is dependent on men. Without men, you are going nowhere. Come on, church, are we here? Church, are we here? Somebody say, I need a man. Mm. Say it like you believe it. Say, I need a man. Say, I need a man. Am I talking to somebody here? The man by the pool. 38 years. Why are you still here? He says, sir, I have no man. Huh? So that tells you that if you have no man, your destiny will drag. If you have no man, your destiny will delay. If you have no man, your destiny will be slow. You need a man. Another man with the same issue of paralysis was in the village somewhere. Jesus Christ came near and four of his friends came and said, guy, today is today. You are going to work. He said, how? He said, the Lord, he said, I cannot walk. They carried him on their shoulder and they went to where Jesus was. When they went, the place was full. They did not stop there. They got a ladder, climbed the roof, unroofed the building, lowered the man, paralyzed before Jesus. And Jesus seeing their faith, which means the guy's faith was even paralyzed. So, Jesus saw the faith of his friends and then he said, rise up, take up your mat and walk. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh my God. Am I talking to somebody here? As you sit here, the moment you die, four people will come and carry you on their shoulder. 
Where are they taking you? They are going to bury you. You don't need them when you are dead. You need them now that you are alive. You need them to help you carry your burdens in life. You need a burden bearers in life. Am I talking to somebody here? That is why Rhoda is very crucial. In the realm of man, the will of man is superior to the will of God. Because God has given the earth to the sons of men. If anything will happen, God will need collaboration with man before his purpose, vision is even established here. Are we, am I to communicating? Am I communicating here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, I don't like your faces. Hallelujah. Are, are we here? Are we here? That is why Paul praying. He said, when we pray, he said that casting down imagination and thought and argument and every high thing that exalts itself against the purpose of God, the knowledge of God, holding it into captivity and bringing it into obedience of Christ Jesus. Until, you see, bending the will of man is witchcraft. Are we here? So, we are not encouraged to bend the will of man. You may have authority, you may have the spiritual power, but no, we are not supposed to do that. Even God does not bend our will, but it's in our reasoning. My sister, come. come. Are you here? Are you in the house? Pastor, let me use your car key. You give this key to that man. Hold it. Are you listening? Now the key is in her possession. It lies within her will to decide. Either this guy will get the key. Maybe she came to church going home and God whispered into her ears. The guy you are driving, give it to him. Give it to pastor. Give him this money. Give that. Church, are you here? Have you heard that before? Some of you have heard those whisperings. But what happened? You do not carry it through. Are you listening? Now, it, is, it lies within your will to decide. Either you give it to this brother or not to. Are we here? Why is the will of man superior to the will of God? God gave Adam choice. He said, Adam, don't eat of this fruit. And he gave him choice. Adam exercised his choice. And the garden was over. Here comes the second Adam. That was all that God has. The last Adam. There was none. Also in the garden of Gethsemane, he saw the pain the ordeal he was going to go through, he went to God. Father, if it be your will, let this car pass me by. The Bible said there was silence in heaven. You know why there was silence? Because God was now afraid. <laughs> if Jesus loses on this area, heaven have lost forever. Humanity have fallen into oblivion. We have no hope of redemption again. The second time he went, if it be your will, let this car pass me by. There was silence. I could imagine that God has stood up on his chair and was going up and was coming. Am I going to lose this investment? No. Can you imagine yourself? Just put yourself in the state of God. Am I going to lose here? Because first Adam failed us. Look at us. Now I have prepared my only son and I have released him for humanity. You also enter the realm of will and now you are trying to exercise your will. Heaven was quiet. The third time he said, well, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. The next verse, and immediately an angel was dispatched to strengthen him. Which means, 
when Jesus was praying, let the cup pass me by. All the angels were afraid. Because one decision, I can't take it again. And Satan would have won. Could it be that your car key is in somebody's hands? <laughs> Could it be that some money that must come to you is in somebody's hands? But the person is using reason. Argument. He's propounding theory. Why you should not get the money? One day my pastor told us a story. He said, he had a BMW 5 Series. God came to me and said, give the car to a particular pastor. He said, God. He said, I gave God 10 reasons why I cannot give the car to that pastor. He said, God, that man cannot maintain BMW. You see, sometimes when God says, look, give something, bound toward you. Amen. Grace. There is abundant grace that when God moves it towards you, it brings replenishing. It restores you. You never lose anything. You might have given 100 million, but the 100 million levels up even more over and above. Are we here? Could it be that your approval, your proposal, the person to append the signature on that proposal is saying no and thinking about it? In life, you need men. But you must learn to handle the mechanics of warfare to control the thoughts of men. When it is about you, their thoughts must be good. When it is about you, their thoughts must be yea and amen. When it is about you, they must not refuse you. Oh, am I talking to so? Am I preaching? Am I really preaching? Rhoda, you need, you need Rhoda. Rhoda must open your door. If Rhoda refuses to open your door, you are in trouble. Can you imagine what would have happened if the soldiers woke up and they were looking for Peter? And they said, let us go to the house of Mary. They will come and see that Peter has broken prison and is standing at the gates. Why? A young damsel refused to open the door. Today, I prophesy over your life. Whoever Rhoda represents in your life, whatever Rhoda represents in your life, within the few months for the year to end, let Rhoda open your door. Let Rhoda. Rhoda may be in abroad. Rhoda may be in West Africa. Rhoda may be in South Africa. Rhoda may be somewhere. Wherever Rhoda is, she must hear your cry. She must hear your voice and she must open your door. Church, are you alive? Yes. Church, are you alive? Yes. So my sister, go and give it to him. My brother, your blessing will never be cut off in life. Collect it back and come and put it down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Church, are you here? Yes. As we close, I want us to be on our feet. Hold somebody's hand. As a point of contact. We don't have it all together. Are we right? Somebody must help you. We call them destiny helpers. Some of them are destiny connectors. Some of them are destiny burden bearers. Somebody can see a need in your life. And meet that need. Oh, my God. I just saw a car pass here. Any person that really need car, maybe for ministry, may God give you that car. Are you, are you, are you here? You don't need money to buy a car. All you need is favor. 
Some people buy houses for their girlfriends. One of my pastors said something. Let me say this, then we pray. He said he was about to roof his building and he needed one million dollar. He didn't have the money. So he prayed. He said, God, what do I do? He said, take money. Go and give to this pastor. So as he obeyed, when he was returning, somebody called him. He said, Prof, where are you? Um, God told me to give something to you. He said, come to my office and let's talk about it. When he came, he said, uh-huh. Talk. He said, God said I should give something. He said, what are you doing? He said, I'm roofing this building and it requires $1 million. He said, I have taken care of it. He said, what? I know that this is not your final church. You are going to buy a land and build a church. Amen. But as I have studied the Bible, the discourse between Elijah and the widow of Zarephath is a major principle the kingdom runs on. Give me first and there will be replenishing. The money to buy the land will come, but God will move you to give to certain strategic men of God. He was talking here about taking the money to a certain man of God to release a certain prayer. It is not only prayer they release. It's grace that commands certain things. Are we here? If you don't get anything, grasp this principle. Whenever your money is about finishing, ask God, what shall I do? When God said, give to this person, just obey and there shall be a replenishing. Your salary is not enough. Your salary is a seed to receive a harvest from God. You must get the courage and the faith to sow your salary so that your harvest will come. Lift up your hands. We are praying, Father. As we pray, move Rhoda to open my door. Your door may be approval. It may be acceptance. Your door may be money that must be given to you. Your door may be something. Church, if there is nothing, let's spend five minutes in active, serious prayer. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lebre si kato shanda la praya. Rende lebre si hato zi anda baraba babaya. Zede de bere kada bosi kabande, zenda brasi bandolo lo pro shada bahaya, zende bere bosi bandolo lo pro si bande bere bapa, rakabasi hato san derele pe, roda banda bara bapa na poya, zende bere bapa na pa, rabosi andelele prese, rakabanda bara basi hato san de. Lebre kabanda brasi bonda banda bara baba rabanda briazi andolo lo po shanda rabanda bria banda bara baba rakabazi andolo lo prosete reke de bre kabanda bara baba ya briazi ato sande le presi banda bara bande Isanda bara baba anda bara baba ya to sande le prenda bara baba anda bara baba ya rakabanda le le pre Ya taya, rabanda lele penda banda bara baba, ya banda lele penda banda bara baba, rakabasi hatata, reke de presi hato, rabanda bara baba, ya banda lele prese, rabanda bara baba, rabanda la la banda priatata, rabanda bara batata, rabanda la la batata, rabanda la la botata, ya banda la la botata, rabanda la la botata, rabanda bara botata, rabanda bara 
Rapanda Botata, Rapanda Bala Botata, Rapanda Bala Botata, Rapanda Bala Babanda Bala Bapata Taya, Ricky de Bria Pondo Boroba Pau, Rapanda Bria Panda Bara Bapa, Rapanda Bara Bapanda Bara Bapa, Rapanda Bala Bapanda Bria Ba. Now lift up your hands, lift their person, lift up your hand and pray for yourself. Lord, Rapanda Bara Bapa, Rapanda Bria Paya, let Roda open my door. Let my doors open. Grant me access. Rakabiria bo siya tata. Lebenda beraba sanda pa. Rabanda bria ponda po. Rabanda bria siya taya. Rabanda baraba panda pa. Jean de Bria Siato, La Banda Bria Banda Paya, La Banda Bria Banda Paya, La Banda Banda Paya, La Banda Bria Banda Paya, La Banda Bria Bosia Taya, La Banda Bria Banda Paya, La Banda Bria Banda Paya, La Cabanda Banda Paya, La Banda Bria Sia Taya, La Cabo Shanda Lelepe, La Banda 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 Paya, La Banda Bria Banda Paya, La Banda Banda Paya, La Banda Bria Bosia Taya, La Banda Bria Basande, Le Pen. Rapanda bara bapa, 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 in the name of Jesus. Can you give me Amos chapter 9 verse 1? Put it on the board for me. I'm closing here. Amos 9 1. Say my father. Grant me access. Say the remaining months of this year. I demand uncommon access. I demand uncommon access. To walk in my high places. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He said, I saw the Lord standing upon the altar. And he said, smite the lintel of the door. You know the lintel of the door? Do you know the lintel of the door? Yes. He said, smite it. That the posts may shake and cut them in the head. All of them, and I will slay the last of them with a sword. Access by the altar. Are we here? Solomon offered sacrifice, and his heavens opened, and God came to him. Are we here? It was a sacrifice the children of Israel offered that they came out of Israel. Some of us, we have been coming to church the whole year. We take everything for normal. Listen, church is not a normal place. Church is a place for spiritual transaction. I want to give you opportunity. Sow a seed you have never sown before this year. And place a demand and say, God, I want access for the remaining part of the year. Every year is the same. What, br what brings difference is the actions you take in the midst of the year. Your sacrifices, your prayers, your fastings. Are we here? Please, do you have envelopes here? Do you have envelopes? I'm not mentioning a figure. It's between you and God. Something you have not offered before. Sacrifice is not about value. Sacrifice is about cost component. Are you in the house? I will not give unto God that which costs me nothing. So some of you, thousand shillings is nothing. You can just sit at a restaurant and a ogali and tilapia. <laughs> Thousand will be gone. Do you have a witness here? You can just go with friends and take some rice and choma, and thousand is gone. Some of you, that which costs you in the year, if you take it real serious, something will happen to your life. 
Amen and amen. Can you give me the envelopes? So church, I want to give you opportunity. This is the scripture. The Lord is standing upon the altar. Commanding doors to be open. If you have faith and you can do it, come and take one. Sunday you bring it to church. No mention any figure. Whatever you can do, you do it and you bring it to church. I'm waiting for you. Shall I go? Shall I not go? Don't worry. I am out of this place. It is God that is going to be a blessing to your life. People's life are just going to turn around. Some of you must talk to your wife. David said, what shall I render unto God? Sir, are you married? Are you married? Where is your wife? She's in Mombasa. What's she doing there? She's working. What's she doing? She's just at home. There is something God must do for you and her. So call her and discuss with what you should offer to God. And spend time and pray. Sunday, come drop it on the altar and see God. This is a scripture. Carry to God in prayer. Amen. Let's welcome Pastor. Wow, wow, wow. Can we appreciate the servant of God? I said, can we appreciate the servant of God? Amen, amen. Just be seated for a few minutes. Um, you know, something was stirred up in my spirit. Uh, I, I think, I really think I, I, I need to go to Ghana someday. Because the people that I've met, Ghanaians that I have met in my life, they have been such a blessing. Including this person. Isn't it true? Reverend speaks. The, 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 the first Ghanaian man I, I, I interacted with was a man who was working here in Nairobi. Uh, many of you may not know him, but he was a brother called Kojo. Man, that I have seen, he made me love Ghana. That man, you know, he had, he had the word, but he was also very highly placed in one of the organizations here in Westland, actually one of the banks. He was a director, finance director, overseeing many countries. But the man would come to church before everybody else. Make sure. Sometimes you find he has a broom he's sweeping. So I said, hey, this man. And when you give him the microphone to preach, the man had fire. But not only that, the man was a giver. I think there's something, I've, I've, I've not been to Ghana, but I've been to Nigeria. There's something West Africans know that East Africans need to know. Even our amens are so weak. When I'm preaching, when I would be preaching in Nigeria, I feel like people want to, to take everything I have in me. You have to stop them from saying amen. Here it is the reverse. You have to encourage people to say amen. There you have to say, now stop, let me preach. Well, they'll say, amen. But uh, there's something, those people are so aggressive. They can give in one service and give three times, four times. And God is blessing West Africa. I pray that we can carry, catch that grace. So that brother amazed me one time. He would, uh, first of all, he would, you know, God really had blessed him. His tithe, I think, his tithe would uh, settle half of our bills. But one, uh, one time he came and said, you know, Pastor, I feel I should give more than this. And uh, he gave about almost three times what he was giving. 
But not only that, he never wanted to make sure there is a, I mean, he sees there's, there's no laptop. Doesn't ask, just come, comes with a laptop, comes with, with microphone, comes with... I, I pray that God will make you a financier in Jesus' name. Then the other, the other Ghanaian brother is, is actually right now in church. He's one of our elders here in, in, in church. He's a brother called Chinyo. And uh, amazing brother. Amazing brother. I mean, I, I said, what, what is it that is in Ghanaians? So I was keenly watching uh, this man of God to make sure whether I, I, he's, he's like the other Ghanaians. But you, you have not disappointed <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can, can we just say a prayer for the nation of Ghana that the Lord will continue to do great things. Father, we thank you for that land. There's something in that nation of Ghana. We pray the Lord you continue to bless that nation. May that nation arise. May that nation become even greater. May you raise even more servants, oh God, that are going to impact the world uh, like, like the ones that we have met and the ones we're interacting with. May your grace be multiplied upon Ghana in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we receive of the same grace that this nation has. Their love for you, their genuineness uh, in the things of God. Lord, we pray that we will catch the same anointing and the same grace in Jesus' name. Now, um, let us not take this lightly. You know, sometimes you can look at yourself and say, what do I have? Let me give you a very quick testimony as we, f as we finish because I'm also I'm taking this envelope. We're going to believe God with my wife. We're going to sow a seed on Sunday. And we're trusting God that God will open doors for us to be able to finish our house. Amen. But I'll give you a very quick testimony that sometimes you really never know what God will do. I was in a meeting. I've shared this testimony many times, but I know many of you have never heard it. I was in a meeting and uh, this man of God is to you. Hallelujah. This man of God came up and said, he said, God is going to bless you with a miracle, a lifetime miracle. That was, those are the words he used. And he said, uh, I want you to believe God and give the full amount of your rent bring it and put in the envelope. In my mind, I thought, this is a very... But you know, I learned one principle that when you listen, when you give to God, you can never lose. You can never outgive God. If you give to men and you don't, you're not, you're not, you're just giving to please men, you can lose, but you can never lose when you give to God. So I did not, now the problem was <laughs> I did not have that money. It was an equivalent, because I was, that, this was in the U.S., it was an equivalent of about $250, and all I had in my wallet was $1. But he said, God, I want to connect to this. So this man said, By f I want to pray for you. God will give you seed. And I believe this. And that's why, before you finish, I want to pray for you. You might say, oh, I don't have the money. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to pray that God will give you seed. Because the Bible says God gives seed to the sower. So I, I, I say, just take the envelope, write on it by faith. I pledge this seed. He said, God will give you the money and just be faithful to give. So I prayed. And a week later, gave me that money. And I sent it to that ministry. And I've shared this testimony many, many times, but it amazes me God's, how God works. That was in the month of June. I went, I had been invited to speak at a conference in a, in a city called Austin in Texas, 2006. In the month of July, as soon as I landed in Kenya, a man calls me. A man that I had met in LA, in April of that same year, that I'd even forgotten. He tells me, God has told me to bless you. And that man paid our house rent without fail for 10 years. Not only that, 
God used him. The land that we have that we're going to build on paid half of it. There are people, as you say, there are people who are gets. There are people God just brings and they change your life forever. But that kind of access and that kind of grace came just because of simple obedience to what this man of God. So there, there are certain things that we don't understand. But I've learned every time I have a need, I saw a seed. Every time I'm believing God for, and sometimes you say, what do I have? But God will show you something that you can give. Let's pray. Just hold that envelope. Wherever it is, let's pray. Let's pray and I pray that God will give seed. Father, you say in your word that you give seed to the sower and you give bread to the eater. To the eater you give bread, but to the one who sows, give seed. I pray in the mighty Jesus that you give us the seed to sow. And that as we give, we will not lack in the mighty name of Jesus. That we will be able to reap a heart fold in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we appreciate the servant of God? Hallelujah. Share the servant of God. Amen. Have you been blessed? In fact, I feel so stirred up. If it wasn't that tomorrow is we're supposed to be here by, by uh, 9, I was going to say let's just continue with our Kesha today. Because uh, I really feel like praying. There are certain things that there are some rodas that must open the door. <laughs> so if you are not so much in a hurry, I think after we take tea, at least we should take like one hour and just get into a real prayer and break certain things and enter certain places. Because there are, there, there are things that you begin to realize, you know, I must break out of this. I must step into a new place in Jesus' name.